Hello, this is David Birch at Star Pass School of Navigation. Uh, some time ago, we made a video that showed how to import into Expedition the high resolution rapid refresh model, which has this very nice data over, over the region of uh, Puget Sound and the Strait of Juan de Fuca. And uh, that's already in here. And now I want to compare that data to the local model the WARF model from the University of Washington, which is only available as a graphic image. Uh, and, um, and so we want to overlay that. And we can do that with this very nice image overlay from Expedition. So I want to illustrate that and then show how you might then start doing some numerical corrections to evaluate, uh, uh, evaluate the forecast in these waters. So step one, we've got to get the image. And let's see here. Okay, so here's one easy way that we've set up. This is just starpath.com forward slash local. Then go to model forecasts, and then you can roll down here. And this would be the latest, uh, the latest version. Then you can just right click and save that image. And, uh, I've, and then you could save one for every hour or two. I have an article will explain uh, how frequently they're done and the difference in the models. But in a sense, this is probably the best model forecast for this area. But it's only run every 12 hours. So, and we can't do GRIBS. We can't do weather routing with this. But we want to compare this to the model that we can do weather routing with. And so we've got that image saved. Or you can save, uh, you know, 15 of them. This model puts out 15 hours of forecast. So now the image trick here with, uh, it's not a trick, it's a procedure. So here's two I've already loaded, 18Z and 19Z. And so I'm going to just do one more to show the process I've been doing. And I'm standing by for feedback to find maybe an easier way to do this. So I'm just going to import another image and I'm going to take, say, 20Z. That's this one. So you see, I went and downloaded six hours of data here. So I'm going to import 20Z. Now, once that image is here, we have to geo-reference it, which is done in a, in a very easy way. I guess I can't move any bigger. But I've made that a little chart here to make it easier. So this use, uh, you see here, oh, OK. So here's a live, uh, a live cursor. Uh, and so, and the points I've chosen to do is this right down here where the coast hits the bottom of the chart. This could be improved, and I'll, I'll think through a better way to do that. So that's what you want. And then, so that southwest coast I've figured out is supposed to be supposed to be that latitude and longitude. So I just copy that and go over here and paste that and say OK. And then that's that one. And then the other place I've got is this one right here, up on where that coast hits the water. That's here. Copy this, copy, come over here, uh, paste, and that's OK. And the other one I took is right here, sort of the north, would be the northeast tip of Foulweather Bluff, right this point right there, easy to find. And now that's right over here. I copy, copy that, and paste here, paste here, and OK. So that map is now geo-referenced. I can say OK. And that's the one we just entered, and it's here. It's number 20. Uh, and if we open that one, uh, let's just say uh, open. I guess open. Now, and here I, I'm doing something wrong, but every time I load this, I end up in some strange part of the world. So I have to figure out how to get back to. I'm just doing something wrong there. Maybe I can actually like set. If I had the boat position set here, it'd probably come right back to the boat. I don't know how to do that yet. But so here's now that image. And let's check to see what we've got here. See, valid 20 Zulu, February 5th. Now, this GRIB data, let's see, the GRIB data is 18 Zulu. And I've got 15 hours in there. So I could actually go up here and go plus 60, 19, 20. So these are the ones that we would be comparing here. See, there's very strong winds over here. That said, the gribs say 35 knots, but look at that green. That green's 35 knots. So these guys are agreeing pretty well here. 
but we want to sort of look at detail where it goes light, what's the strongest side, this and that, and the other. Now, what I and I just did one case, so that's that's the process right there. But let me just show you how you can go further because you want to evaluate this up until the race time by comparing what really took place. And I just did one comparison here where I've got real data, um, real data. So and there's a buoy right here, but I have the data at 19z. So we'll go back, back 60 minutes. That's 19z, but now I've got the wrong map in here. So you have to go back to charts, images, and take 19z and open that one. Okay. Oh, look at that. I didn't move. Perfect. Now let's see if I'm at 19z. So here, reading underneath there, valid 19z. So it did overlay that map. So then, here's the thing we can do. We have two models here. Right, there's a buoy right here, and I'll, I'll show you in a moment if we go back to, uh, back to the web page and go here and go to uh, observations. Uh, go to observation. That's this buoy right here. So you can go to that buoy on this page we have. Then you can go here, see the station data. Then if you go clear to the bottom, this is history now, you can go clear to the bottom of that page and get into some historic data. It's, it's at the bottom of the page, down in here somewhere. And that's what I've done. And so uh, I've got that data, which is right here. I don't know quite what's going on. Let me cut that. Okay, so this, where are we? Here's where that buoy is located. It's, this is, I call it the border buoy because that's Canada and that's U.S. And it happens to be in this line segment right there. So I can always go that as a checkpoint. So you see, we have two forecasts here. The UW Wharf model is green. And the green is like, I think here, green is like 35. Oh, green is anywhere from, from 32 and a half to 37 and a half, the nominally 35. So UW is calling for 35 knots, right? You know, well, 30, 35 knots right in here. But the, but this model, now we can go, what am I missing here? I want this little, uh, let's see, what, I want this guy, the tool tip. So the, oh, okay. So you see, this is reading what the grid file says, the wharf, the, the uh, H, high resolution rapid refresh. So the right in this region, you got UW calling for 35 knots, and or 32 to 37, and the wharf model calling for about 25, 24, 25, something like that. So now we go over here, and lo I'm looking back at that particular time, which was 19 Zulu on February 5th. 2016, and that's that's here. Two five at uh, 19 on the 16th, and they have data at 1850 and 1920. So it's somewhere somewhere like here. We have to pay attention. That's meters per second. So this is 22 knots. So that's eight. That's 16. This is about two times that. So they're saying here like 22 knots, something something like that is what really took place there at that time. So in that okay. So in that one particular test, this high resolution rapid refresh model actually did better than UW model. I uh, that. I don't know that we can draw any more conclusions than that, but these are the two best models, and this program is a super way to compare them. And then you can just, uh, then what you do is you'd step, go to the next hours, go through here, but then each time you change an hour, you'd have to go back to the charts, back to the charts, get the images, and load the right image on top of it. So that's my exercise. That's what I wanted to show for now, and I'll stop and wait for feedback before pursuing this.